Welcome to Around the Weird. Here's your host, the museum curator of the strange and unusual, Mr. Nothing. Thank you, Mysterious Voice, and welcome back to Around the Weird, a booktube channel where I talk about all the unusual and out-of-the-ordinary literature that I've found in my travels. Today, it is Short Story Tuesday, so I wanted to talk about uh, a short story from a well-regarded um, author, uh, at least in the, the modern sense, maybe by her contemporaries, she wasn't as, uh, as, as celebrated uh, as time went on. Uh, but today's short story is all about um, uh, Christmas and hunger and um, uh, burning bridges in the past. I am referring to The Burglar's Christmas um, by Willa Cather, who wrote under the pen name here, Elizabeth Seymour, uh, which was published in 1896 uh, in uh, um, an edition of The Home Monthly. For those who don't know, Willa Cather is, uh, or was, an American author who lived in the um, late 1800s up to the uh, mid-1900s. Uh, she um, was known for writing some poetry, but mostly novels and a few short stories here and there. Uh, this short story specifically comes pretty early in her um, career. Um, and uh, so we see some of her early work here before she would later go on to be well regarded in other capacities. Um, in, in her work, uh, she pri primarily focused on pastoral role settings, which you see in stories like Oh Pioneers, which I've heard about but never actually read. Uh, and she focused on a series of other sort of rural stories as well, uh, which um, uh, a lot of critics, like they liked her earlier work, but as time went on, they accused her of, of focusing on an idealized version of the past rather than dealing with the issues of of the present, um, being a little too conservative in that in that regard, which is which is an interesting critique. Um, uh, another interesting thing is that Willa Cather might have been gay uh, or a lesbian. There's no like definitive proof of this in, in any of her writings, uh, especially her personal writings. But um, people have uh, seen that she had uh, she had a lot of uh, female companions, female friends, and you know the whole thing where like oh they're they're roommates, but they um, a lot of historians say they were not roommates. They were uh, they were some maybe perhaps something more. But uh, that's something interesting to note um, as it might guide our understanding of her readings in, in other places. Uh, and so without further ado, let's talk about uh, The Burglar's Christmas. I, I will do a summary, a little bit of analysis, and we will move on from there. So The Burglar's Christmas uh, focuses on uh, two homeless men, one who we come to know as uh, Willie, although he's been going uh, by pseudonyms as uh, time goes on. Also interesting to note that uh, Willie uh, could kind of be short for Willa. So even though she's writing under a uh, pen name, maybe this is her way of saying, hey, it's it's me or, or something like that. Uh, but Willie and his homeless friend are hanging around a street corner uh, on Christmas Eve um, and they're hungry. Uh, things haven't been going well for them. And one of his friends says, you know, it's time to hang it up. Let's go find something to eat. I, uh, I think I can score a free lunch from uh, one, of the, one of the people I know at a, at a, at a diner um, across town. Uh, but Willie doesn't want to go there and he, um, he believes that uh, he's probably made a few too enemies at that diner to even get a free meal. So he's left by himself and Willie laments about how he's burned a lot of bridges in his past uh, and he was promised great things at one time, but uh, uh, especially by his family, but it, he seems to only have disappointed these people. And so now he's hungry and he realizes his, his only chance to eat is probably to rob somebody. And he does attempt to um, steal a Christmas gift from a woman who drops one uh, as she's walking down the street. Uh, doesn't even notice it, but he feels um, too guilty about it and gives the present back to her. And then he sees a, a house that's um, that must have been built pretty recently in the Chicago area. Uh, and he decides that he's going to try to rob that house as nobody might be there right now. Uh, and it, as he's trying to break in, the door opens and a tall woman uh, answers the um, the door. And it's revealed that this woman is actually Willie's mom. 
uh, that she, they moved to the area pretty recently, um, which he says might have been due to her trying to find her son who she hasn't talked to in quite some time. Uh, and she's excited and tells everyone that Willie's home, including her father, who is very enthusiastic to finally see him, although he seems a little bit a um, bit stubborn, as, as, as is Willie, but uh, he's just happy to have his uh, son back. Uh, Willie has dinner with his mother, uh, where she showers with him, lo- with him with love, which he, he feels that he doesn't deserve, and... Um, and he's like, oh, you pardoned me too much. And she's like, oh, don't worry about that. A mother always loves her children no matter what. And we're just happy that you're safe. And from there, uh, Willie and his mother proceed to relax. And life seems to be pretty good for Willie. Uh, and as the story comes to a close, he just notes that um, uh, e- evil seemingly in these moments can be de- can be like defeated, thrown out of the world. And the dawn will always break, leading to better moments in the future. And that's where the story ends there. In terms of analysis, there's a fair bit to talk about with The the Burglar's Christmas. I just want to say that Willa Cather's writing is, is pretty high quality here, uh, bringing um, a lot more to this short story than... Uh, than um, it, it really seems like there's there, like her her, her writing adds an, a, another layer to this uh, pretty short, short story. Uh, but one of the themes that uh, Cather is working with here is that of a personal reckoning. Willie is forced to confront uh, his many mistakes. Like yeah, he's at a point where he's hungry and he's realizing that Everything he did wrong in life is is like standing before him, and he has to accept that he he's partially responsible for this moment, this this uh this uh sort of low moment in his life. Allow me to read you an interesting quote from this. It is a tragic hour, that hour when we are finally driven to reckon with ourselves, when every avenue of mental distraction has been cut off, and our own life and all its inethicable failures closes about us like the walls of that old torture chamber of the Inquisition. Tonight, as this man stood stranded in the streets of the city, his hour came. It was not the first time he had been hungry and desperate and alone, but always before there had been some outlook, some chance ahead, some pleasure yet untasted that seemed worth the effort, some face that he uh, fancied was or would be dear. But it was not so tonight, and that's an interesting quote because it, it shows like the the dawn that or the the horror not the horror but the the unfortunateness that is slowly dawning on, on him that he's had opportunities before, uh, but now as um, Cather says the walls are closing in on him like the Inquisition like the pit and the pendulum a, a literary reference there uh, where he's he realizes that every avenue of opportunity to eat to have a good life is being cut off. Um, because of his actions, because of the family discord, because of the bridges that he's burned, uh, because of the things that he should have done but didn't do because he was hard-headed and and stubborn. Um, it, what's interesting to note is that like you know hindsight is is twenty twenty. It's like easy to say like oh I should have done that or I should have done this, but you know we weren't that person. In, in those moments, like age makes makes wiser of us all, uh, and troubled situations make wise, wiser of us all. And so, like we might say, oh, I should have done better, but we we probably would have never done better. And so we're kind of wallowing in our own failures there when we, whenever we have moments like these, and we're our own worst critic even too, because like uh, as um, as Willie notes later, like he apologizes to his mother and says, you shouldn't pardon me. But she's like, no, our children will always be hard on ourselves, but it's up to mothers and fathers to love them unconditionally regardless, which is a very wholesome uh, message um, from, from Kat. They're very Christmas-like uh, message there. And I'm sure the hunger in this story makes it worse uh, that, you know, like, uh, the hungrier you get, the more you, you're hard on yourself. Like, why didn't I do this? Or why didn't I do that? Uh, so Willie is really good at getting at the psych- psychology of, of like a hungry person who's kind of fallen out of favor with with their family and with society. And Cather is also touching upon family strife in this uh, situation, which I'm sure a lot of people, both in the pra- uh, past and the present, are familiar with. Uh, Willie um, Willie thinks that he's burned th- this bridge, but it, it turns out that he only thought that, that that's not actually the case in um, in reality. Uh, both uh, his mother and their father seem to regret the discord that has taken place, 
but in the in the at the end of the day they they love him and that they're they're very excited to see that he is alive and somewhat well and that they're able to reconnect with him uh kind of the the mother's love that exists for or should exist for uh for the for the child but what's also interesting is that the mother admits to her own hard-headedness uh like you see that a little bit with the father where he's like you know i'm um i'm i i only regret that that my son had to like reach this point before we loved him or before we took him back in and the mother you know admits that like she through her life like she's had a lot of troubling moments where she's refused to admit that she's wrong but you know she's grown older she's grown wiser and it's um she's she regrets that hard-headedness that led her to kind of split um or led the family to split with uh with willie so you know kind of um both sides admitting their their faults here and coming to realize on on christmas eve that they're they're better off um with each other but that's not to say you know uh, that this strife might not continue afterwards, that the troubles that uh, they had before might not, you know, come back after Christmas. But what's what's important, uh, as Catherine notes, is the forgiveness that is taking place um, at at least at this point in the story. I think I just have one um, critique of this story. Like uh, like like the the other th ideas that Catherine is talking about are great, but I do think that in some sense it is too hopeful. That the family reunion clashes re with the the setup of life on the streets. That Cather is building up the story of a person who laments their life, and laments their choices in life. And it's uh, like, in, in in reality, like you know, a lot of people face this, and there is no happy ending to bring them out of this of this poverty and, and this struggle. Uh, so, um, like the clashing tone of the story, uh, kind of. Um, hinders it a little bit but at the same time it does abide by the christmas spirit the christmas miracles how um you know maybe just this once in, in this moment a a son reunites with their family and is is lifted out of this horrific situation that they they find themselves in uh so it, the hopefulness does work with the Christmas theme there, even if it does clash with some other elements. But uh, maybe there isn't a clash at all. Maybe this um, this is sort of a, an unfortunateness underlying the story. And that it's possible that in his hunger, Willie is imagining uh, reuniting with his with his family that he's still on the street corner just imagining this this situation where he reunites with his mother and father and is, is taken in and kind of lifted out of this situation i don't think cather is saying that at all but you could make an argument for that ha that that being sort of like a a facet of the story um that people who are hungry and have a lot of regrets in their life might imagine situations like these and um you know, try to find a better position in their life, especially before Willie might die, because it does seem like he's at a point where he's starving, and he he talks about the pale specter and whatnot, so he might be close to death or knowing that death is at hand if he doesn't find something to eat. Um, but again, like, I don't think Cather is going that far in the story. Anyway, those are my thoughts on The Burglar's Christmas by Willa Cather. A fine uh, short story. Um, I don't have much to compare it to uh, from the rest of Cather's catalog, but it is an interesting start uh, for my experience with her and her writing. Uh, I, I do think I recommend it out there um, just because it's a fun you know, short story to read for Christmas, but also some of the other themes might be pretty relatable for people who have particular strife with their uh, with their family. Although um, sometimes, you know, that family strife doesn't end on such a positive note, um, but um, still worth reading. So I'll put a link to it in the description. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Otherwise, uh, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so that more people can find out about this author or this uh, short story if they don't know about either of those. And until then, I wish you the best of luck in your weird and not-so-hungry travels, hopefully. Farewell.